In this series of videos, we're talking about amortization. In our last video, we discussed straight line amortization, and I gave this example of, of straight line amortization. And certainly, if you're confused about that, please go back and watch that video. Uh, the second video in our series, this one, is going to discuss units of production method of amortization. And I thought kind of I'd discuss units of production before actually doing the problem. Uh, so straight line amortization says amortize your asset the same amount every year just because time ticked by. You know, the asset's a year older. We're going to amortize, in this example, uh, it was $4,000. So each full year, we amortize our asset for $4,000. Um, what units of production says is, look, our assets don't actually amortize on this sort of straight, always the same basis. When I use an asset more, it deteriorates more. If I use an asset less, it deteriorates less. So why don't we try to capture that asset usage as part of our amortization? And that's exactly what we do here in units of production. So rather than measuring amortization per year, we're going to measure it based on how much we use our asset. So again, we're going to do the same example. You can see I've added a part B to it. Uh, and it's not going to be based on years ticking by. In the case of this truck, it's going to be based on the number of kilometers it's driven. Uh, you might do units of production, and it's based on the amount of uh, units that a machine can produce. Uh, there's a lot of options here, but let's go ahead and go through Tinker Inc. This time, not using straight line amortization, but using units of production. So, rereading the question, it says Tinker Inc. buys a new truck for $25,000 on September 1st, 2012. The truck is expected to be useful for five years, after which time the manager hopes to sell it for $5,000. The manager estimates the truck will be driven 300,000 kilometers during its five-year life. The company has a December 31st fiscal year-end, and then it says, assuming the manager wishes to use units of production meth uh, amortization method, and that the truck is actually driven the following distances, compute amortization for each fiscal year. All right, that's just what we're going to do. So much like straight line, we start out in the same way. We say, here's the cost of our asset. Let me just get my ink tool here. Here's the cost of our asset, and the cost of our asset was $25,000. And we expect to recover from that asset $5,000 at the end of its life after we've driven it as far as we want to take it. We're, we're going to be able to either trade it in or sell it on the used market for, for 5000 bucks. Now, we don't call that the trade-in value or the resale value in accounting. There's a technical term for that. We call it the residual value, and, and that's our residual value here. So our cost was $25,000. Our residual value of our asset. By the way, if you just like Google the word residual, I think it means like leftover. You know, so our leftover value when we're done with the asset is five thousand dollars. Why don't I look that up? I'm curious now. Probably wasting your time here. Go ahead and fast forward if you're not curious. Define residual. Let's see what Google thinks the word residual means. Uh, remaining after the greater part or quantity is gone. Uh, quantity remaining after other things have been subtracted or allowed for. Beautiful. I agree completely with you, Google. It's the amount that's left over. All right. Whew. Uh, live video. Sometimes you make mistakes, but I think I'm right on that one. Uh, okay. So cost minus residual value is our amortizable cost. And so again, if I have a $25,000 asset, but I expect to have $5,000 left over in trade-in value, I only want to amortize $25,000 from the value of my asset, and that's all I'm going to amortize. Now, when we did straight line, we said, okay, take that $20,000, divide by the number of years right there, and we get an amortization rate per year. Well, the, the critique that units of production offers is, doesn't matter the number of years, it's how much you use the asset. So in this asset, we're planning to use it not for five years, that's not what's relevant. We're planning to use it for 300,000 kilometers. So let's do some math. It's $20,000 asset. Its expected life is 300,000 kilometers, meaning that its amortization charge is going to be 0 0.06667, basically six to seven cents, almost seven cents per kilometer. 
In other words, I think this thing deteriorates seven cents or 6.7 cents for every kilometer I drive it. Now, if I had planned this better, I would have used an even number, but that's fine. This is going to work for our computations, and then this is no problem. So let's go ahead and amortize this asset then. Uh, in 2012, we drove it 10,000 kilometers. So in 2012, I'm going to say it's 10,000 kilometers times 0 0.06667. And what you find when you multiply 10,000 uh, times 0 0.0667 is you get 667. We'll round to the nearest dollar. Um, now, something also interesting here is in the last one, we in our first year, we counted months. We said, well, but in September, we're going to take four twelfths and we get a number. Uh, we do not do that for units of production. And you might be saying, well, why not? Why don't I take four twelfths of this number then? Because I only owned it for four months. Well, the reason is units of production takes the time element out of our computations, right? We didn't do it based on years or months. We're amortizing based on kilometers. If I drove 10,000 kilometers, my exact amortization should be 667. It shouldn't be four twelfths of that. So again, it's not based on time. It's based on kilometers. We've calculated the number correctly. Let's carry on to the next year. 2013, it's 60,000 kilometers. So 2013. 60,000 times 0 0.06667. I'm going to need my calculator for this one. I should be able to do this in my head. Is it 2,000 maybe? Uh, I better calculate it. 60,000 times 0 0.06667 is 4,000. That is way off. All right, so it's $4,000. Uh, 2014, we drove 90,000 kilometers. So 2014, it's 60,000. Oops, not 60. Pardon me, 90,000 times 0 0.06667, and what we find there is our number will be 6,000. Um, 2015, we drove 65,000 kilometers. And so we'll take 65,000 times 0 0.06667, and 65 is 4333. We're almost there. 2016, we drove 45,000 kilometers. 45,000 times 0 0.06667 is, uh, I got to recalculate that. I think I messed it up. 45,000 times 0 0.06667. Oh no, it is an even number. I was worried I didn't, when I got an even number, it's 3,000 even. Carrying on to the last one, 2017, it's 40,000 times 0.66667. Oops, wait a minute. No, it's not. Let's just write this out, but I'm going to explain why it is not that. So I'm just going to draw a big X through that, and we're going to talk about our last year of amortization. And this is relevant both for units of production and double declining balance. Now, We've estimated that this truck is going to drive for 300,000 kilometers, or and we only want to amortize $20,000 from the value of our truck. When we get to the last year, or even sometimes two years, we've got to consider the fact that we don't want to go over 20,000 in amortization. In fact, if I'm preparing the schedule and I'm preparing to amortize this, and I still think my residual value is 5,000, I must amortize to get an exact total of $20,000. And that means in our final year of amortization, we just kind of force it. We, we make the, the, the number that gives us the total of $20,000. So I'm going to add these numbers up, and I want to make the total $20,000 in amortization. And I plug in the number here that makes it work. So when I add this up, I get, if I want to figure out the number here, I take 20,000 and I deduct the uh, other five years of amortization and I find, I'm just eyeballing, I think I did it in my head, but I better make sure, four, uh, 
20,000 minus 667 minus 4,000 uh, minus 6,000 minus 4333 minus 3,000 and sure enough I do get a plug number here of $2,000. Now as I said it's a little bit of an imperfect science because in reality we often end up changing our estimates towards the end and, and changing estimates is a whole other kettle of fish but assuming that we want to keep a $5,000 residual value that means over that five year period we must amortize exactly twenty thousand dollars from our asset in the last year unless I've driven exactly three hundred thousand kilometers my number is going to be off it's just not going to work in this case if I went forty thousand times point zero six 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 seven I would end up at a higher number than two thousand I think I'd end up at twenty three thirty three uh, and obviously my, my amortization then would be off uh, because of that, our last year, we, we plug in the number to make our amortization total to $20,000. Now, I want to take a big picture look of, at units of production versus straight line amortization. Straight line, we said we calculated an amortization rate. In this case, it was 4000 bucks a year. And the, the notable fact about straight line is in a full year, it's the same each year. So you can see it's 4000 4000 4000 4000 in the years where we have a full year of amortization. Now the notable thing about units of production is it varies and what I want you to pay attention to is the fact that our busiest year, our most kilometers driven, will be the highest amortization and our slowest year, or the least kilometers driven, will be the lowest amortization and all points in between. So my busiest year was 2014, I drove 90,000 kilometers my asset got amortized the most in 2014. It got amortized by $6,000. My smallest year was 10,000 kilometers, and that was the smallest amount of amortization. So units of production has done its job. It said, when my asset's busier, amortize it more. When my asset's less busy, amortize it less. So this amortization method has served its purpose. Again, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that these lead to journal entries, right? So in 2012, my fiscal year end, I'm going to debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization for 667 and I I always find my students lose sight of the fact that there's journal entries tied to all of this work don't lose sight of that that's the amortization entry that's all for this video our next video we look at double declining balance method of amortization